Well, thank you very much for uh, wishing me a good birthday. I can't imagine a better place to spend my <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the people who know me know that I mean it. Um, that's sick, I know. Um, uh, bonjour aux, aux citoyens français et européens, but uh, I don't think they have translation, so I'll jump to English again, if you don't mind. Usually when my, uh, my delegate from France is here, I'm careful not to speak in English. But, um, so I'm, I'm, uh, my name is Manon Ress. No, there is a French translator. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. I'll give her a break. <laughs> uh, my name is Manon Ress. And uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, KI Europe. Uh, it's a new entity that was uh, created in uh, 2013, and uh, which for now has an office in Geneva, but uh, we expect to uh, open other offices. Um, I'm here not as a librarian. Most of you probably got that. I'm a user, and a user in many different ways, because I was a student, like most of you. I was also a faculty member, a research uh, scholar, and I was also involved in uh, research and development in education. And uh, I worked in uh, developing country and, di and um, distance education too for a couple of years at the beginning of the web. And um, I must say uh, it was interesting to hear that the issue of distance education keeps coming back from 96 to now, so nothing is really solved, and I'm glad I moved on to consumer <laughs> issues. But um, um, I wanted to say that uh, even though I'm not a librarian, I understand the library's issues from the inside, like most of you here, I'm sure. And uh, one thing that I remember from my uh, one of my first day teaching, at, uh, my, the chair of my department took me to the library, the university library, and uh, he insisted on taking me to the library and he said, I'm going to introduce you to the librarians and the archivists and make sure they become your best friends. <laughs> because they can either make your life great or miserable. Your research, great or pathetic. So I decided that effectively, next slide, I should pay attention to uh, the power of the librarians. <coughs> Now, of course, I'm not a faculty member and I don't depend on librarians, but I, I depend a lot of, on librarians for uh, access to the kind of things I need for my research. But libraries are also extremely powerful at another level, at the economic level. And these, these numbers are uh, provided by, I think, uh, <coughs> in one of the library's documents, yeah. right? And um, I thought it was quite interesting to see the, the, the uh, huge number of 6.6 .6 billion. So the STM means International Group of Scientific, Technical, and Medical Publishers, right? And I thought it was also very interesting to see that uh, the library spent billions more in facilities, staff, providing telecommunication and computing services. I mean, they are not the little player in the exercise we engage in here. Next slide. They're also very important in terms of the, the jobs. And I know whether I'm in the United States or in Europe, uh, we're always talking about jobs, job creation. And I must say, it's quite impressive that uh, libraries are today the larger employer in the uh, copyright intensive industries compared to book publishing and journals. If you put together the book publishing and the journals, you still have a smaller number than your libraries. Of course, it's, it's shrinking. It's being threatened every day. So <laughs> let's hope it, uh, it can last a bit longer. So now I'm also here as an observer of uh, treaty making. Um, I was involved in uh, 2000 something in the, the Treaty on Enforcement of Judgment in The Hague. Some of you might have been there or involved, actually. And it was a, uh, at first proposed by the EU, and it was a very big, comprehensive treaty that included everything on Earth in terms of enforcement of judgment. The internet was included, um, Consumers were included, which is why I was invited to sit as an advisor to the U.S. delegation on this topic. 
Eventually, the uh, State Department, which was heading the, this delegation, decided to shrink the, uh, the project because it was too big. It was going nowhere. It was being bogged down all the time. So they ended up, from a, a big enforcement of judgment um, convention at The Hague, with a B2B choice of port contract convention. Very small, but quite controversial in many ways. And just to let you know, the libraries were part of this, uh, this treaty because they are parties of contracts. Now the U.S. was uh, was smart enough to include a footnotes that made it so that totally unfair contracts, when applied to nonprofits such as libraries, would be null and void. But you know, it was there. But I, I'll I give you this example just because I've been an observer of treaty making or treaty not making <laughs> for quite a few years, and uh, I've been very interested in in this treaty, of course. And I was kind of blown away by the 11 topics for library and exception, next one, which are great. I love all of them. I think most of the people in this room could probably write a book on topic one, topic two, topic three, topic four, et cetera. I mean, it's, it's just amazing how we, we are moving forward with this kind of uh, complexity. However, I think that, um, there's a way to look at it, for me, for, to wrap my head around this, because users, believe me, are eager to see a solution to all these problems that were discussed so <laughs> eloquently by my uh, learning colleagues here. Users are in a rush, too. I go online, and I want my stuff here in Geneva, but no, because my IP address doesn't work, and my library doesn't work. So, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking there could be like three baskets. I, I know the chair of another committee will love to talk about the basket where you can put different issues. I like this idea. So can you pick the other one? So I'm thinking, imagine that some of the uh, 11 topics are more actionable or uh, can be actioned sooner than others. And of course, there are many outcomes, and we know that. So imagine you have short-term, medium-term, longer-term items, and you also have things that we all know should be binding. We all know should be mandatory, but we also fight very hard for the optional, because that's what we do. And then there's the soft law, and we, we heard some of us were at the Tunis model law discussion that sometimes soft law is pretty important when it comes to implementation. And, Basically, all of these 11 points, if they even become treaty or part of a treaty, will have to have some kind of implementation. So, uh, next one. Um, I would like to, uh, to propose a, a, a little exercise for you. You know, I'm not a librarian, I was more of a teacher. So I'd like to make <laughs> you work. And I'd like you to have this, this uh, template. I don't know if we have made copy for you guys. Yes, everybody has it? Not everyone. Not everyone has it? Well, you can share. No, actually, it's, it's supposed to be anonymous, I think. <laughs> it would be better. And look at the possible outcomes for the different topic, the 11 topics. And try to uh, imagine what you would put in the things that has to be done in two years, or could be done in two years, and could be mandatory, and what could be done 10 years from now and as a binding optional protocol, for example. So, next slide. This is just an illustration. Do not <laughs> hold me to this, because like you, I will change my mind several times, okay. <laughs> depending on what's in the first little box and what's in the last one. So but it's just to give you a, a, an illustration. Topic one, preservation. For me, it's, a, it's kind of a, an obvious one, but just for me, right, I'm not a librarian. But a, as a user, I'm like, duh, that's what they do. That's what they have to do. It's minding and it should be mandatory. No treaty should work without this, right? Um, and then there's uh, topic two, I would say the same thing, but I would let you fight that one. <laughs> to give you another example, um, 
I think that, for example, parallel importation might be a little bit more nuanced. And in that case, I would say maybe short or medium term and binding but optional, which means if a member state decides to option in, it's binding, otherwise it's not. Uh, topic seven, and we, we went through that, the orphan works. Uh, we saw should be mandatory, but mandatory in the terms of addressing the issue. And I would, I would recommend a kind of uh, language that we heard, uh, adequate and, you know, protection. But, you know, it's up to you. So I would be very happy if you were not too nervous about filling in this. And you, you could put one, two, three in those little box just to see. You don't have to put your name, of course. I, I wouldn't do that to you. But uh, it's interesting to me if you refuse to do it, too. <laughs> because that would mean that you don't want to show your cards, ever. Not even to yourself. <laughs> so on these, on these nice words, I'll thank you in advance for giving me those paperback, and I will give you the result at the next quiz. <laughs> <laughs> so Manon has given you your homework, <laughs> um, and I think that, that thanks to all of our presenters for giving us a, an excellent overview. We do have time for questions and time for, for audience interaction. I can see there's, there's some people in the room who may be able to bring some questions to this debate, so I'd like to open the floor to anyone that wishes to quiz our panelists. I would suggest that first of all the librarians and archivists don't ask the librarians.